Ladies and gentlemen, let's read game into the comp video. We have an update towards the Xbox One's additional GPU performance, specifically additional memory bandwidth, which apparently will be available for games developers. Now, I've done this in an article as well because there are some references that I use throughout uh, my discussion. So, for those of you who are not too familiar with some of these subjects, you can check out the um, article and you can find out more about it or it also has links to a series of tweets uh, from Phil Spencer. So anyway, Phil Spencer has announced on uh, Twitter that the Xbox One will be receiving a performance boost. He says, June hashtag Xbox One software dev kit gives devs access to more GPU bandwidth, more performance, new tools and flexibility to make the games better. So, that's all that's been said by Phil. Now, this is obviously really good news, but there's not too much information that we're given here. Now, those of you who have been following along with the Xbox One, certainly if you're regular viewers here, you'll know that the Xbox One is being promised multiple performance boosts, and certainly Microsoft are working on this. Um, one of them, of course, is going to be improved SDKs. So you give that to developers, they have better tools to develop the titles on, and therefore they can hit the ground running a lot better, and they perform better, the games rather perform better. Next is going to be DX12. We'll get to that more in just a moment, and there's also going to be the reduction of GPU reserve, uh, which is primarily utilizing... Oh, being used by connect slash other OS. Now that's about 10%. So there's a lot of confusion right now. With this whole Phil Spencer quote, the main cause of concern, well not concern, but certainly confusion, people be confuzzled. The first is the most obvious one. How much extra performance, right? It's like, if I tell you, well, I'm going to give you a raise, you know, you're working for me and I tell you, well, I'm going to give you a raise and then the raise happens to be like one cent per day. You're not going to get too excited, are you? But the idea, the initial idea of I'm going to give you a raise sounds pretty awesome. It's not until I give you the figure and the figure hasn't been provided. Now, obviously, if it is reliant on the connect, which we've discussed heavily and there are articles here which go into analysis in, you know, the article I've written here, so if you do want more information, you can check those out where I break it all down. I certainly don't want to bore regular viewers with stuff I've discussed like several times over, or for those of you who know what I'm talking about. They're talking about 10%. Now, obviously, they can't just say zero, right? Because Connect still has to do certain things, especially with voice commands. So there's still a lot of confusion. So are they discussing this? If so, what is it going to be? Like 5%? 2%? What? The additional part is, is it even the Connect? It could be something different. It could be that there have been, say, a small hidden amount or a small reserved amount of uh, memory bandwidth that maybe Microsoft were possibly utilizing for something else. Maybe they, they saved it for features that they could possibly add later on. So a little bit of an example of this is we know that both the Xbox One and the PS4 have a certain amount of memory that's reserved for the operating system. With the PS4, for example, it has 5.5 gigabytes available for games. That's including the flexible memory. But we're fairly sure that the PS4's OS is not eating up the remainder. And Sony have basically said, yeah, well, we're holding some of the memory back. Um, how much memory they're holding back is unknown. Current estimates are between 512 megabytes and 1 gig. So it's possible that Microsoft had a little bit of memory bandwidth left in reserve and they're giving this. This is just pure fear, isn't speculation, because Phil unfortunately has not provided much information. So the Xbox One's memory system is fairly complicated, at least in comparison to, say, the PS4. It relies on DDR3 and ESRAM, um, and so the DDR3 is most likely going to be the area where a lot of the memory performance needs to come from, right? Because it's the it's the it's the largest pool of the memory. It's 68 gigabytes per second, but at the same time, it's not that fast. It's it's a large pool of memory, eight gigabytes, but it only operates at 68 gigabytes per second. Where you've got the ESRAM, which is about 204 uh, gigabytes per second, but only 32 megabytes. So the so obviously you've got this. Uh, 
small amount of memory that has to try and play cash up for the lar for the larger memory pool. So, what has Phil Spencer actually done since he's been the head of the Xbox division? Well, quite a few things. Um, for a start, he, well, under his watch, maybe some of these things were already in the works, and certainly a couple of them were, but we can credit him, I suppose. He introduced the Connectless SKU, which Microsoft, until that point, had said, nope, not going to happen, nope, 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 not going to happen. And then suddenly, it was announced, yep, by the way, guys, here's a Connectless SKU. And I'm sure we all were jumping for joy. The next was the paywall, uh, I'm sorry, Xbox Live Gold, which was blocking off applications such as Netflix, which, to be honest, was pretty retarded. I just don't understand that, and fans were pissed, particularly since the Xbox One was lauded as a media machine, and yet to use an application that I can get on my smartphone, my PC web browser, any bloody application in the world, or any hardware in the world, basically, I need Xbox Live Gold, and that, that was just frankly ridiculous. Now, we've also been told that external storage is being uh, coming to the Xbox One, which is fantastic as well. Um, meanwhile, PC gamers. PC gamers have had some good news. Actually, I forgot to do this as a news story. Oops. But uh, Phil has basically said on Twitter, once again, that I agree that MS needs to up our gaming presence on Windows. Uh, part of my Xbox role is to bring back our Windows gaming focus, which I personally think is really good. And logically, that ties in with the X12, which we'll get to in just a moment. Also remember that despite the fact that we're going to be getting all these performance increases for the Xbox One, the PS4 will likely remain quite superior to it by quite a portion. Remember the hardware specs are not changing here. They're not swapping out the memory. So all things being equal, the PS4 still has the GPU and memory bandwidth advantage. But both the, both both studios, basically, both Microsoft's Xbox division, um, PlayStation with the ICE team, and just generally are improving things pretty much over time. And for example, if we look at uh, the Tech Tribunal, our analysis of Watch Dogs, uh, PS4 versus Xbox One, the frame rates are very similar. There's a bit more visual tearing on the Xbox One version, but frame rates are very similar. The biggest difference, the disparity, was actually the resolution. Um, slightly better lighting and shadows on the PS4, but some of that did, to be honest, come down to internal resolution as well. Now, the Xbox One is also going to be getting the X12. Um, I've done a lot of analysis of this, and I don't want to go super into stuff of what he's discussed, but suffice to say, there are rumours stating it's going to be about 30%. There's links to that in the article. Um, but it's really up in the air, because no one's exactly stating what this is going to be down to. Is it going to be draw call performance? Is it going to be overall performance? Some people are really sceptical, right? Some, admittedly, that are very sceptical are Sony developers, but they do say that they've had some evidence of it. I don't want to say one way or the other. What I'm hoping is that we're going to be seeing much better multi-threading from the Xbox One. This is particularly true since the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are having problems with the CPU performance. That's been discussed by a number of different developers, including even a couple of Sony's own team. Even Naughty Dog have stated this. Um, so it's it's definitely something to think about. So Ice Team as well, as I've mentioned, are working a lot towards improving the speed of the PS4. It seems to be attributed to GPGPU. I already discussed that in depth. But basically they seem to be using the PS4's compute functionality to augment the uh, PS4 CPU. And that's what some of the rumours are from some of the industry uh, insiders. And Court himself, uh, also known as Post Goodins on Twitter, you might um, remember he's one of the head honchos or one of the best programmers at uh, uh, Ice Team, or lead programmers, not best programmers, that's an unfair phrase, lead programmers. And he actually has stated that surface tiling and detiling is 
a lot faster. I think it was like up to 100 times. It's 10 to 100 times, I believe. That's pure memory. So it's a lot faster, basically. That's uh, utilizing CPU as well. So there's definitely a lot of performance advantages there. So what are my points? Well, it's improving. You've got to remember that the systems are barely six months old. Right? If you were to think of it this way, how old does a console usually get to before it's put out to pasture? In other words, how long does it last? Generally speaking, a console lasts at least five years. Some that don't do too well, maybe four. But generally speaking, you could say at least five. Sometimes six, sometimes a little bit more. But generally, they last as the best at about five years' time. So that means that right now, if you were to convert the PS4 and the Xbox One into human years, they'd basically be a teenager, right? They would barely be out of high school. They probably wouldn't even be out of high school. They are still learning the education. So they've got a long way to go before they are experts in their field. And this is the same for the people who are learning to program for them. And so do not worry, my friends. This E3 is going to be a preview of what we're going to be seeing on the both systems. But it's not going to be look as good as the next E3, or the E3 after that, or the E3 after that maybe even. It's going to take at least two to three years before we really start pushing the systems to their max. Then, of course, we're going to start hitting the point where the developers are going to start struggling. But for right now, the great news is extra memory bandwidth. We're not quite sure all the details, and I will, of course, keep you all informed of them. By the way... I am letting you guys know I'm pretty crap at this because I keep forgetting to add twi my Twitter information. But you've got facebook.com slash redgamingtech. You can also tweet me. Please do because I always forget to, well, mention that I even have Twitter. So you can go to RGT Crimson Rain. That would be R-A-Y-N-E. I'll repeat that one more time. At RGT Crimson Rain. And you shall see me in a really dodgy gym photo that I need to change at some point, coming to think of it. You can tell that I really didn't pay much attention to this whole social media thing. Anyway, so yeah, follow me, and you shall have cookies. Maybe web-based cookies, but you'll have cookies nevertheless. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.